So I want to talk about exact equations. So to talk about exactness, Chris, yeah. what do I need to know? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Damn it. Chris did the wrong section's homework. So he learned some stuff about exactness the hard way. <laughs> so to remember how exactness works, what I need to remember is a little bit of calc three. So if I had say some function f of x and y was a constant. What goes in your brain next to this? <clears throat> like, do you have a picture that lives in your brain next to this? A plane? No. Like a well, I mean, that might live in your brain next to this, but it shouldn't. This Put those things further apart. <laughs> it has a zero. Oh, C is a constant, right? Yeah, so C is a constant, right? So if I hit both sides of this with a derivative, I'm going to get 0 out, at least on this side. On this side, I'll get some stuff out, maybe. Oh, yeah, but it's not a gradient. So this is related to gradients. This is where the function of x and y, right, where the height, kind of, is constant. What's the spot where the height's constant? It's not really a spot so much as it is a thing where the height's constant. What's a thing where the height? You guys know what a dahu is? <laughs> that seemed like a really great segue, didn't it? A dahu is an animal in Switzerland that is a mountain goat, except that one of their one pair of legs is shorter than the other. Uh, there are there are front dahus and side dahus. <laughs> I can't draw goats, so this is a dahu sheep, okay? <laughs> and the dahu sheep is special <laughs> because a dahu sheep can only exist on one level curve, right? Because his legs are like this. Right? So he always has to stay on the spot that's, well, it's not really a level curve, it's a spot on the same slope, right? Yeah. But really, that amounts to a level curve for the mountains. So, your little dog who walks around on a level curve, this thing, what f of x and y is c, should have in your brain, is a level curve or a dog who's path. Right. Okay? So this is a level curve that I'm talking about. Like, fundamentally, I'm talking about there is some level. And now I have to remember a little calc 3, which is like, hey, what if you wanted to take a derivative with respect to x of f of x and y? Well, on the one hand, partial of f with respect to x. Yeah, I'll say that louder though. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay, how about this? I'm doing differential equations, right? So I'm supposed to be thinking of y as a function of x. You guys see that? So hitting this with a d dx, I'm actually I'm writing hard d, hard d, right? That would be wrong in calc 3 oh, land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh. But it's right in like in my differential equation land, that's the right idea. Right? So I agree, I get a partial of f with respect to x, but then I also get a. The implicit thing. Uh huh. Constant so you get a partial of f with respect to y. And then what's the chain rule kick there? Partial y partial. Close. Not a partial of y with respect to x because y only depends on x, right? So you get a dy dx here. So what I'm really saying is if I'm sitting on a level curve and I differentiate with respect to x both sides, then the chain rule gives me that the partial of f with respect to x plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy dx has to be zero. Notice that categorically, right, 
the parcel of f with respect to x is probably some function of x and y. You guys down with that? Right, because like the odds that you differentiate with respect to x and everything goes away are pretty low. You might be left with x's, you might be left with y's, you're certainly likely to be left with some constants. Right? Okay. What kind of what category of thing is the parcel of f with respect to y? Yeah, it should also be a function of x and y, and probably some different one. Right? And then there's a times dy dx. Is this what we would get if we asked this question in Cal 3? Yeah. We never did this, though, did we? Like, no, because we didn't think about y as being a function of x in Cal 3, yeah. right? Yeah. You guys see that? If I had told you in Cal 3, like, on chain rule day, hey, let's think about y as a function of x and take a derivative, then yeah, this is exactly what we would get. Yeah. So, but, 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 wait, I took a derivative with respect to x because usually x is the dependent variable, right? Yeah. But what if I was wrong? What if y was the dependent variable? Switching. Or sorry, the other way around. I was thinking that x was the independent variable and y was the dependent. What if I switched them? Switch the equation. Yeah, instead of getting a dy dx over here, I'd get a dx dy over here, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me maybe just do that trick that I do with separ separable equations and just assume otherwise. So I'd get something that looks like m of x and y dx plus n of x and y dy should be zero, right? Okay. Now I need to give you a definition. So an equation is exact, and by an equation I mean a differential equation, if it's of the form, well, or can be arranged to be in the form, m of x and y dx plus n of x and y dy is 0 with m is, where did I get m? It was the partial. Yeah, it was the x partial, right? And n was the y partial. for some f of x and y with continuous derivatives. On 2.5, that number 31 that I showed you is this, basically. Yeah. Yeah, because this is what section 2.5 is about. Right. <laughs> so then the cool thing is, what's my solution? So if I had this, what's the solution? Well, almost half. F of x and y is right in spirit, but in truth you need constant. Yeah, equals a constant. Because that level curves the thing with that slope. You guys see that? So remember when we did finding potential functions? What? It's easy. <laughs> Trust me, you'll be happy to see exact equations because you don't have to do integration by parts or any of this crap. Right? You just like look. It's not so bad. Questions on exactly what this means? No? Well, you said its solution is that. That's exactly what you started with. Yes. So, uh, 
So I started with this thing because I knew that if I hit this with a derivative, I would arrive at some kind of differential equation. And this gives me a new class of differential equation I can solve. Right? So instead of trying to figure out how to solve these now, all I have to do is figure out where they are. Because I know how to solve them. All you got to do is find the antiderivative. Does that kind of make sense? You guys need an example? Yeah? 